this video will cover the entire week. Um, topic for this week is modeling with functions. We have some under cleanup to do on section 2.3. Then we'll cover 2.4 and 2.5. So last part of 2.3 that we need to talk about are heap and odd functions. The last video that we had on 2.3, I talked how you could tell whether they were even or odd from a graph. A quick reminder, even functions are reflections across the x-axis in the y-axis, reflect across the y-axis. And our odd functions have 180 degree rotational symmetry about the origin. Um, and we can tell them from a graph. Well, the formal definition for an even function, function is even if and only if f of x equal to f of x. Okay? And it is odd if and only if f of negative x Office. I'm going to show you how we're going to use it. Okay. So, the way you can tell whether a function is e or odd, so use the one that they have in the book, a g of x, 3x to the fourth, minus x squared, plus 6. They want to know whether it's even. The way you do that is you're going to put a negative x for x, simplify, and we're going to compare to the original function. Now, put parentheses around here because there are Invisible parentheses right here. So let's do, I'm going to do g of <laughs> g of negative x. That says copy the original function. Except where there's an x, put parentheses inside the parentheses. I'm going to put a negative x. Here's what's neat. Negatives to even powers turn into positives. An even number of negatives turns into a positive. So this would become 3x to the fourth. A negative to an even power becomes a positive. What's in the parentheses here being squared, this part right here is positive, and a negative of a positive, I'm just going to copy the negative sign, positive squared. I have a plus six. Notice that my new function is identical to my old function. V of negative x is equal to the old function, therefore, I have an even by this. I'll show you an example of one that is odd. That is, the book is giving you as h of x is equal to x cubed minus 7x. So I need to figure out what h of negative x is. Well, h of negative x is copy the original function, except where there's an x, put parentheses. Inside the parentheses, put the negative x. A neg uh, negative to an odd power is a negative, so this would end up being negative x. Then a negative 7 times a negative x is a positive 7x. 
But what I can do is I can see what I can do to kind of make it look like the first one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull a negative 1 out of both of these terms. Pull it out by factoring it out. Division. Negative x cubed divided by negative 1 is a positive x. A 7x divided by negative 1 is a I can rewrite that without that one there. So negative x cubed minus 7x. Notice that x cubed minus 7x is just my h of x. So this is actually minus. So I get, ultimately, h of negative x is equal to negative h of x which is my definition of an odd function. Okay, I talked through, I didn't realize that I did not have that on the screen. I'm gonna talk through that second part again. I take that original function, except where there's an x, I put parentheses, and inside the parentheses, I put the negative. That negative x times negative x times negative x is negative x cubed. Negative seven times negative x is the positive. I factored a negative 1 out of both terms, gave me negative 1, positive x cubed, and a negative 7x. That negative, I just, negative 1, I just wrote as a negative. I then looked back and saw that x cubed minus 7x is x, h of x. So this turns into negative h of x. That gives me the definition of Now, the shortcuts here. If every, okay, I'm talking polynomials, polynomials here. If every power even, you have a constant. For example, that plus 6 that we had on the first example, I could think of that as plus 6 times x to the 0. x to the 0 is 1, which is plus 6 times 1, which is 6. That's what I mean by the constant. If every power is even, your function is even. If every power odd, the function cannot have a constant. In that odd function. Because remember, what is that constant doing to the graph of the function? Actually moving that graph up. So if I start out with x cubed graph, goes through the origin, then I do that same graph plus so this graph, I could rotate it 180 degrees and I get the graph. That's what odd means. Let's say I do it plus 3. 1, 2, 3. It no longer has that rotational symmetry about that. If I ask you to show me algebraically whether it's even or odd, you've got to go through all this work. If I just ask you whether it's even or odd, without justification, you can use this or you can look at the graph. If you're looking at the graph, you need to tell me if it's justification. Hey, if it's the graph, it's even because it's a reflection across the y-axis. It's odd because it's a 180 degree rotation. Um, so that will get you through the questions three and four on section 2.3, where it's your actually homework 13. Last homework. There are only two homework questions in that. You have five of them that you're doing algebraically. Then you have um, six of them that you're looking at. The Shouldn't be too, too rough there. Which brings us into 2.4. 2.4 is modeling with linear functions.
Okay. Um, and again, these are things that we can write like y equals mx plus b. For this, b is my y-intercept. We can think about this as the starting amount. We know that the m is our slope, but this is our range. Okay, and modeling, in most cases, it's going to be a story problem. Um, so, your homework 12, in section 2.4, you're doing 1, 2, 5, and 7. I'm on page 91. I'm going to do problems for 3 on 91 and 4 on 92, just example, okay? Um, and we're going to want to interpret it in the linear equation, and what does that act, what are the actual? So for three, as a salesperson on problem three, 91. Hopefully those are the same pages as yours, section 2.4, doing the exercises, the page numbers may be. It says they earn $800 per month. Plus a 3% commission. It says P equal to gross pay. And S equal to sales. Both are in dollars. A, it says find the pay the salesperson may have a sales of fifty thousand dollars and a hundred thousand dollars. I want to do when S is thousand. When S is hundred thousand. Okay. Well, fifty thousand. Well, I'm going to take the fifty thousand times zero point zero three. And we'll use a calculator because up a decimal. Um, don't forget percentages. You move the decimal point for two. So fifty thousand. No three. Eighteen hundred. That's his commission. Then I'm going to add the eight hundred dollars to it, and I'm going to that would give him e three. One, three thousand. Plus eight hundred dollars. Thirty-eight hundred dollars. Now that's how I would expect a late elementary school or middle school student to come up with the answers. Well, B, they say, "Hey, give me the equation." Gross pay. I'm going to exact same. My gross pay is 0 0.03 my sales plus a month um, how much I'm making a month. That would be the answer to part B. What is the slope of the line? C slope is 0 0.03. What, what does it mean? Okay. Um, what is the slope of the line and what does it represent? Well, the slope is 0 0.03. What does it represent? He earns the cents per dollar What is the p-intercept of the line? Well, it would be 800 intercept. The zero in for the s, 800. And what does it represent? How much he makes? If he sells nothing. 
That would probably be the only month that he made that amount because if he wasn't selling anything at a commission sales place, he would probably not. Okay, that was problem three on 2.4. I'm going to do problem. Four. Does the equation F equals nine fifths plus 32 gives the Fahrenheit temperature corresponding to a given Celsius temperature? The equation describes a line with playing the role of the x axis, F plane, Y. What is the F intercept of the line? Plus A. F intercept. I'm going to put a zero in for C. It's going to give me 32. Does it tell us? This 32 Fahrenheit. Or degree. Celsius. What is the slope of the line? Slope. Oh. Line. And what does it tell us? For every. One degree Celsius. Fahrenheit. If I go up one degree Celsius, I'm going to go up almost two degrees Fahrenheit. If I go down one degree Celsius, I'm going to. The linear equations should be pretty straightforward. You've been working with them since at least eighth grade. Some maybe. We can model things with other than linear equations, <clears throat> which is two point five, which is other modeling. Um, we have already talked about vertical motion model. Height at any given time is equal to either negative 16 or negative 4. One of those two, um, P squared plus initial velocity times T plus the initial height. Um, the top one is in. Feet, bottom one is velocity. Well, height. Okay, that's going to give us a graph. Always going to look something like this, where this distance between here and here is that height. A, the maximum is always going to be at the vertex of that. So if the maximum is always at the vertex, the max time of the maximum height is going to be equal to negative p over 2a. The height at the maximum is going to be, hey, just take that, put it into my height function. Whatever number you get there, put it into the height function. Um, I can ask, hey, what's what's the height going to be at two seconds? I'm just going to put a two in for t. How long does it take to hit the ground? Put a zero in on the left hand side, and then gratitude. When's the height going to be? Five hundred feet. Put it in on the left. Modeling. Um, using vertical motion. The equation that I can give you is. Um, actually, I'll write this down. This is for your homework 11 problems one and two. Our vertical motion model type problems. Uh, problem number three from your homework 11. It says, hey, there's a model that the length of the skid mark is proportional 
the square of the speed. Okay. Um, anytime that they say something's proportional, we usually use a K in there, and then they can give us some information that we can go back and solve for what K is for a particular circumstance, then use that K to answer. Um, and it works you through step by step with problem number three, how again a model is just an equation. Um, the only ones I expect you to be able to do directly, I expect you to be able to write vertical motion models. I expect you to do those two point four linear models, and Farther down the road, I expect you to be able to write an exponential model. For right now, um, if I'm going to have you do something exponential, I would give you the model. When we actually learn about exponential logarithm, I would expect you. So, we can give you equations, vertical motion models, linear motion models, and the other big ones that we like to ask are things that deal with shapes that you dealt with in prior math, triangles. So if um, look at problem number 10, for this section 2.5, 2.5 number 10. And this is stuff that we should, uh, uh, homework gives you way too much information. It gives you information that should already be at the top of your head. It says, recall that for a right triangle with legs of lengths A and B and the hypotenuse of B, the Pythagorean theorem tells B squared, B squared, C squared, and A, right? Suppose that the legs of a right triangle start out with the lengths of 3 feet and 5 feet. They both increase at 4 feet per hour. A initial is equal to 3 feet. B initial is equal to 5 feet. They increase at a rate of 4 feet per hour. Is find the perimeter for several times. So I'm going to do time zero. So the perimeter, perimeter is equal to a plus b plus c. So a plus c going to be a squared plus b root c. I'll put that in the calculator. Root I get approximately 13.8. I'm gonna do the T is at one hour. I add four feet to this, add four feet to that, plus I'm gonna have seven. I'm going to do six. root seven point four oh. and feet. Don't forget our units. Stop on the first test for units. Several. I'm going to make that at least three. Two is a couple. I'm going to add four more feet for the next hour. So. That's The root of 11 squared plus squared 41.3. That's fine, but don't simplify a formula for the perimeter as a function of time. 
perimeter equal to a. a is 4 plus 4, uh, 3 plus 4. My a plus b is 5 plus c. Square root of a plus e. This is my answer to A. My answer to B. In C, it says simplify that whole thing. C says to simplify. Let's start with the outside. 3 plus 5 is 8. 4t plus 4t is 8t. Now in here, I'm gonna have I'm gonna do these two things. I've got plus two times the product, which is 4t. 16t squared plus 25. Two times the product would be 40t plus 16t squared. Now I'm going to combine terms. Um, 9 plus 25 is 4. 24t plus 40t is plus 16. 32. That's going to be underneath square roots. Um, nine plus twenty-five. There are no powers of four. There's no powers, perfect powers that can be every term. Pull a two out. That's going to end up with a seventeen perfect square. So there's no other simple. I'm going to put the quadratic term first. Three two t squared plus thirty. So we, the modeling that you're kind of responsible for now is, hey, take information that you know and then apply it a little bit further and just do a little bit more than you Algebra 1 or integral. That should be enough information to get you going and done on homework 11, 12, and 